Hey everyone, this is Steve with Collider, and we are here at our Sundance studio in Park City. Uh, before we get started, I want to give a huge thank you to Film EO for being our sponsor. It really costs a lot of money to be here, and they're allowing us to champion independent cinema and films like uh, you guys and the fantastic doc. But uh, if you're not familiar with Film EO, uh, they're shattering the barriers by placing the power to greenlight films in the hands of creators and fans, and you can learn a lot more about them at film.io. How are you guys doing? Great. <laughs> it's great to see you. Sorry for being late. Uh, please. Uh, I just want to give, I, 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 it costs a lot to be here. So having a sponsor, it really makes a huge difference. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I really want to start with right at the beginning. I, I was going to curse. Loved this documentary so much. <laughs> I am a huge, huge fan of your father and what you guys did with this. Uh, I think anyone who is a fan of Chris Reeve is going to love this film. Uh, and uh, I'm just so happy you guys are here so we can talk about it. Um, no one has seen it yet, including Sundance. So how have you guys been describing it or who wants to explain uh, what the doc is about? Go ahead, Lita. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> That's great when you too, you can just give the bucket to the other one. <laughs> Pass the bucket. I mean, we started this film uh, because we knew this story so well. We grew up with it. Um, and, uh, and so it was a very easy film for us to sort of start describing. You know, you had um, the greatest cinema superhero, the original cinema superhero on screen. Uh, and you had this person who, after his tragic accident, became a, a true hero in life. And that is a, just a lovely concept to play with. Um, and then we met these guys and the film became about so much more. It became about, about family and it became about love. And um, legacy. And about an extraordinary legacy. Well, I'm curious. So you guys were working on this prior to you guys being involved. Like, how did that come about? Because it's without you three in this, it's a completely different movie. I think that's a question for you, maybe, guys. Yeah, so I mean, it all started um, uh, with a cold email that we received uh, from an archive specialist um, who uh, we had a Zoom call with and we you know, wanted to then uh, take it to a production company and that's when we approached Passion Pictures. Um, and then uh, Passion Pictures uh, suggested Ian and Peter as directors and I said a note to these guys like you got to check out McQueen and Rising Phoenix and basically based on their previous work we're like I think this is them like they're the they're the right guys for this um, and then we jumped on a couple calls with them and got to know them and um, and and got on well and um, and it all sort of came together quite organically and quite quickly well I'm just curious had you three been thinking about making a film before why was now the right time we had talked casually just as siblings over the years about potential projects or the idea of any sort of project and we came to the conclusion that it needed to be the right time with the right team and t this year is 20 years since our dad died so it felt like if we were ever going to do something like this if we were ever going to tell this story uh in the way we wanted it told it would this year felt like the right time and then as we met Ian and Peter and the folks at Passion Pictures and Misfits Entertainment and Words and Pictures, we knew we had the right team. And at that point, we said, we trust you, we believe in you, and we are here to give you whatever you need, but go do your thing. Go make this the way you want to make it, because we trust and believe in you, and we've been rewarded beyond comprehension. It's really lovely. We knew that we were going to be handing over an archive, maybe sitting for interviews, but beyond that, we were going to completely relinquish control. So it mattered to find the right people who would tell the story authentically. There's a way you can tell the story just focusing on kind of, you know, the glossy, polished exterior that sometimes people think about, but to show the highs and the lows, to show the public persona and then what was life was like behind the scenes, um, really like that takes people with a real gift. And we were able to find that in these two. And sorry, just to follow up on your question before about... Um, you know, what is the film about? They answered it so eloquently, but I would just add that it's the story of a hero, but it's not propaganda. It's not like, hey, geography. <laughs> right. um, our father lived an extraordinary life and the things that he did and accomplished and fought for made him a hero. And we knew that however they told the story, as long as it was authentic and real and unflinching, that's the story that would end up being shared with the world. And 
that's what we have, which is such a treat. I was just going to say, I mean, I remember when we first met, we sort of talked about the idea of not putting your dad on a pedestal, which it, it would be so easy to do because he was a gorgeous man. He did extraordinary things. He His example was so inspiring. And it's very easy to sort of like make a kind of like a uh, glib heroic portrait of someone. And we wanted to kind of make sure that we showed him flaws and all, um, really. And because that actually deepens how you feel about the heroic things that he did. I oh, mean, I have so many questions, but I want to ask you guys, I have friends that are actors and when I'm watching them on screen, I sometimes see my friends and I sometimes see the, the, act, the person they're playing. So for the three of you, when you watch your father's work, do you see your dad or can you watch the movie? I don't know, it's a good question. I see moments of him for sure. There, there are, uh, I think every actor brings an element of themselves into a role. Um, uh, a lot of the times, absolutely not. He's, you know, it, it kind of becomes like a, a transformation and you're, if you're absorbed in the story and in the character, you kind of won't think about it. But there are moments like certain looks and smiles that, you know, we were privileged enough to see you know, off camera in our everyday lives. And uh, yeah, absolutely, you do notice those things. I think it's what made the having a film like this so special. So we are now at the point, you know, I have two children, Matthew has two children, and for them to see not only, you know, they watch the films and they really see an actor, but they went to watch this documentary and they see the person behind the scenes really brought to life, which has been beautiful and kind of an unintended consequence of this. I wasn't thinking about them as a target audience for this. We want the world to hear the story. But seeing this family kind of come to life and all of the archive footage that's pulled together so beautifully in this film has really made a huge difference too. I don't know if you want to add. I there's nothing they they crushed it they uh <laughs> i feel the same way we we tend to see things the same way uh, so i'm just curious good. for the two of you um obviously the film this doc uses footage from the superman films and other things how tough was it to get the clearance and you know to be able to use that footage because obviously that footage really really helps sell everything because you know you remind the audience of what he looked like as superman and you can you know what i mean but it wor it would work without the footage but the footage really helps um yeah i mean as soon as you're gonna make a film about a massive movie star which has worked from some of the biggest studios you're gonna have a lot of challenges to get the to get them the licensing but you know we warned the you know the people the team and we worked at it and it took a bit of time but you know people you know, it's it's they want to celebrate as well the legacy of, you know, he, as Peter eloquently said earlier, you know, he's the ultimate superhero and superheroes have moved on to become such a big part of our popular culture. But the, the, the original story is Christopher Reeve in the first Superman. So I think Warner Brothers are very proud of that legacy. So no, we it, it, it took a some time but we, we we got there in the end and you know it's one of the challenge of when you make ret retrospective documentaries loads of archive but to tell you the truth i think to the point of al actually all of you guys i think some of the great footage that you actually shot matt and you know you guys did is is the most magical one because i think people when you watch a documentary about someone which is famous you want to go behind the scene and you want to discover more about the human being you want to be connected you want to see the the small tiny detail of daily life i mean i love the way the film starts and when then i give you a bath in the in the sink i mean <laughs> give myself a bath in the sink <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> just, yeah. and the way she says as well i love that she says oh for posterity everybody will have seen me like this in the morning that if she knew now that actually everybody will see her yeah. like the way she looked in the morning but how she grew to become a hero herself is um is is fantastic so yeah the we needed superman and the story is about superman and that's the where we carve the narrative, but at the same time, we have just loved the behind the scene. I just love, and as Peter said, we made a fi film about their family and how the children take to come the legacy further. Oh, listen, again, I can only say how much I love this film so many times, but it's because of everything. It's the Superman footage. It's you guys being so um, honest and sharing like your real emotions. I, I loved it. I am curious with the editing process because you could have made a three hour movie. You could tell them you know what i mean how challenging was it to cut it down to the length that it was did you ever have a much longer cut or like storylines oh, yes. that you had to remove yeah there we go <laughs> <laughs> i think i mean the thing is that we had a a, a kind of a, a roadmap for how we wanted to tell the story 
um, through the flashbacks and the use of of telling the story post accident and and his life before the accident. So we knew that, and we wa- we knew how we were going to how we wanted to stitch it together, but. We had so much amazing material, so many extraordinary anecdotes. And our first cut was about, was it three hours, 40 minutes? Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> what, can I ask, is that a cut that you were like happy with? Or was that like, no, 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 no. no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. So it was like an assembly cut. of. Yeah, yeah. Like, it, was okay. an, it was more or less an assembly. I mean, our, our working progress is like, it's almost like sculpturing or, or puzzle making. So you've got loads of parts of the film but he doesn't sing yet and the film finds itself we help finding it but suddenly the emotional journey of the film finds itself you know we were talking about it again yesterday night it's just there are moments where you have to make decisions but the decision is for the good of the film and it's not because of length sometimes. Sometimes think people, oh, 90 minutes, we need to hit 90 minutes. But sometimes the film calls out for that. And we could have gone down in loads of different directions. But in the end, we're very happy with what we have. But as I said, it's just, we have this raw material, three, hour and hour, three hours and 40 minutes, and you chip at it bits by bits. And sometimes you're just like, oh my God, if we overstay our welcome emotionally in this moment, then we lose the audience. You always work with an audience. You know, if you make a a, a humorous and a joke in it, and we've had a lot of people laughing lately with it, um, you just want to make sure that it doesn't, you know, it doesn't become corny or overstate his welcome again. So it's, it's, it's just, you know, it's just music. You know, sometimes you overwrite music. It's like you overpaint, you over, you know, it's just, you just got to brush it Exactly. Yeah, it's kind of building tension and then where you release tension and then where you have a, a slightly more epic, grandiose moment and contrast that with something very personal and very intimate. Uh, and as, Ian, sort of, as you were implying, it's sort of like there's a, there's a wonderful point in the process where the film starts telling you what it needs and what it doesn't need. And that can be painful because you're losing material that you you've kind of love and it, it's been in your head since the beginning of the project. But suddenly you just have to, it, you know, you just have to sort of obey what the film needs and say, uh-uh. And we've, go. we've got a really, we'll just say it because he hates us mentioning it, but we've got a great edi- editor, Otto Bonham. Um, he just doesn't want us to mention the name too much, but we have a great system where the three of us, if two of us agrees on something, then the third one has to back down. But in a way, we're the first audience. A filmmaker and his editor is the first law, run of audience. We are the one trialing those emotional moments, those grandiose moments. What does inspire us? What makes Christopher Reeve so big, but what makes Christopher Reeve so vulnerable? You know, at one point in his life, he couldn't spend a single second without anyone where at the beginning of his life, he's probably the most independent, strong, intelligent person you could ever come across flying the Atlantic twice on his own. Do you see what I mean? And that journey is just, it's, you know, it's a movie. Again, well, where am I going to go with my next question? Um, we can make them up for you, don't we? No, no, I, I, I am. Uh, there's so much I want to ask, and I have like five minutes left. Um, so one of the things is, I'm actually curious for the three of you, when you grow up with a dad who is an actor of his stature, uh, how much in your head were you thinking about acting in any way, shape, or form as like a career, and how much were you sort of like, I don't want to do this? I know, you know what I mean. I do know what you mean. Um it turns out that you need to have talent to succeed, and <laughs> I and that that was one limiting factor. I realized myself, just speaking for myself, and I do now work in sort of. I'm on camera. I'm a correspondent for ABC News, so it's sort of adjacent in a in a way um, that I'm out there in front of a camera. But I acted in school plays and enjoyed them. And people, I think, naturally will ask. Oh, do you ever think about asking? I still to this day get asked like, "Oh, you should play Superman." I'm like, "I have brown eyes and I can't act. That's the problem." <laughs> like I that, that's what it comes down to and I learned firsthand that to succeed and you see it here at the festival, all of these people who dedicate all of their being to their art and to the projects that they make, you need to need it like you need air to breathe. And I didn't. And so I realized that if I'm an ambitious person like I am and I want to succeed at whatever I do, it's not going to be acting because I don't crave it. I saw in my dad and my mom, who was so talented as an actor and a singer, they need like they needed it. It sustained them. And it, I didn't have that. So I never even bothered to try. We do joke that we divided our dad's interest between the three of us professionally. So I inherited the advocacy gene. I live in Washington, D.C. I lead a nonprofit advocacy organization. Matthew is a filmmaker and a writer. And Will got all of the on-camera star <laughs> presence. So it took three of us to build up his legacy and follow in his footsteps. But acting somehow slipped through the cracks. And he also used to talk a lot about um, 
how hard it was and the struggle in his early years and going up for countless auditions and getting constantly rejected and not getting parts. And it sort of instilled, you know, there was a, such a passion for the craft and for the work. And also then personally for me, I mean, his journey all started in the theater. And I mean, I, I can't memorize like five lines, let alone like <laughs> five acts. And uh, so, it, yeah, it quickly sort of became something that wasn't on like the horizon for me at all. No, and, and I, I understand your, uh, I understand exactly. Look, if it's not in your DNA, like that you, you know, you're, you're not going to, succeed slash want to do it but i want to switch because one of the things you guys are um you guys have a foundation that champions uh you know um, spinal cord research and, and injuries and i'm just curious what can you tell people about like how where are you in the terms of how are things going uh how, how's progress going are stem cells a huge part of it like what can you tell people about it well, one of the things we're so proud of is that our dad had a legacy in many ways, but watching the growth of the Christopher and Dana Reeve Foundation and so many more people carrying on that work has been really beautiful. So in the medical research field, we're seeing unbelievable progress. Stem cells is one part of it, but also the extreme focus my dad had on physical therapy. In the film, you'll see him, the amount of hard work that he put in every single day and that he started to get some recovery as a result of that. That was early stages, and we're now seeing many more people get benefits through the type of work that he was doing. And then the advocacy he was doing on behalf of the disability community as well. I mean, you know, he was one of the people in the 90s fighting for an end to lifetime caps on insurance. We finally got that in the Affordable Care Act in 2008. So he didn't get to live to see it, but there are all of these pieces that we see where he was out there fighting and others have now carried on the work in a really beautiful way. And the work continues because the the foundation has a, a, a dual mission and my mom, thrust into the role of caregiver, learned firsthand how difficult it is to care for a loved one with a spinal cord injury. And she realized that she had resources that millions of other people in the same situation might not have. And she wanted to help them and figure out a way to be a resource. So we created the Paralysis Resource Center and give out millions of dollars in grants to help individuals and organizations who need the help. And we're funding cutting edge research. And it's all over the map now. It, the, the paths to cures are more wide open and more inspiring than maybe they've ever been with the proliferation of technology. And I will say, as a proud son, a lot of that is due to the visibility that my dad gave, that our dad gave that community. Um, I have a plaque in my home. It's a cover of a Wall Street Journal that someone turned into like a bronze thing. It's, it says the Reeve effect, and it's a, a graph, a chart showing the funding dollars and general awareness of spinal cord injuries pre-1995 when he was injured and post. And it's a hockey stick off the chart. And that has only continued. And so our work only continues. We're proud board members at the Reeve Foundation and we're as involved as we could be. I was going to say that one of the reasons why I love this documentary is it's also going to remind people about the importance of funding research and raising awareness. And uh, but most, I mean, it's just such a fantastic film. You guys are going to be getting such great reviews out of the fest. Um, I know we, you have to do other press, and we have more <laughs> interviews coming in. So I'm just going to say congratulations. A huge thank you again to Filmio for being our sponsor because I wouldn't be able to be here talking about your film without them. And I wish you guys nothing but the best. And thank you so much for coming in. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks so much. You.